word would go forth with power and persuasiveness, so much so that the hand that I'm holding now would leave strengthened and encouraged and empowered. Bless this, the hand of my neighbor. I ask them now, you now, in Jesus' name, and the church said amen. God bless you. While you're still standing, that's it. Open your Bible. I want to get right into the word of God today. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter number 6. And as you're finding Ephesians 6, let me thank God for our pastors and our ministers in the pulpit and, of course, members of our uh, pastors and uh, ministers' wives and persons that can uh, make up our diaconate ministry. It's ushers and choir, um, musicians rather, and singers, and you, my Heavenly Father's children. Ephesians chapter number 6, uh, verse 10. We'll start at verse 10. And uh, I'll say this, that in preparation... Uh, I began writing and preparing the message, and God began to say so much to me um, that I could not um, fit everything that he gave me into one sermon. So for the next three weeks, uh, I'm just going to preach this one text, and actually, Lord, let me just write one long sermon that we would have been here until the men's ministry meeting at 6 o'clock, because I know y'all weren't going to stay for all that, and so that we'll um, just look at this for the next three weeks talking about coping in a combative place, fighting and warring. And I want to look at this, and I'll read verses 10 through 13 today, and we'll pick up next week in verse 13 through 18, and then 18 through 24 on the following <coughs> Sunday. For those of you that have it, and for those that shall find it, <coughs> Ephesians chapter 6, um, verse 10 through 13, reading from the King James Version today, it says, Finally, my brethren, um, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Um, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness. In the high places. Wherefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand. You may be seated in the very presence of, of the Lord. I want to preach from these words coping in a combative place. And this is part one coping in a combative place. It's part one. Turn to somebody, look him in the face and say, neighbor, you can cope in a combative place. <clears throat> Us as you may be seated in the very presence of the Lord, coping in a combative place. This morning, uh, my brothers and sisters, our uh, sermonic spotlight, of course, it comes to us from an excerpt in a letter that the Apostle Paul penned to the church in Ephesus. And personally, I enjoy reading and studying the book um, of Ephesians because when you read um, the Ephesians narrative, you can't help but get the impression that Paul's deepest and greatest desire is for the recipients of this particular letter um, to go to a different level in Christ. Uh, it is Paul's desire that uh, they would grow stronger, that they would be rooted and grounded and really developed in the faith of Jesus Christ. And in order to accomplish this, Paul does something very interesting in the uh, Ephesians narrative. He, he kind of um, packages um, his entire letter into basically a little three-point outline, if you will. The first thing that Paul deals with in the first three chapters of the letter of, of, of Ephesians is that he deals with um, the believer coming out of the world. He our, our calling out of the world. In fact, repeat that, say, our calling out of the world. Uh, he, he talks about our calling in, in the first three chapters of, of Ephesians. That, that's what he wants the writers, uh, his readers to know, that they've been called from the world, that, that there was a calling on their life, that, that, that where they were uh, was not because of their own merit, where they were was not because of their own actions. But please hear me, that where they were was because God called them out. And, and that's so very significant because before we, before we can really 
um, 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 give God maximum praise. We got to recognize that wherever you are and whatever you have come out of, um, that you didn't do it on your own, but God called you out. Tell us, neighbor, he called you out. You, you, the, the stuff that you stopped doing, you didn't stop doing all of that because you didn't like it. Help me, somebody. The, and the places that you don't go no more is not because you forgot how to get there. Amen, lights. But, 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 but a lot of the stuff God called us, he called us out of it. He, he called us from the world. And, and, and Paul makes a wonderful point in the fourth verse of chapter number one because he says that before the foundation of the world was ever formed that God chose us. And in verse number five of chapter one, he, he, he suggests that we were predestined to be adopted into the family of God. And, and everything that Paul says in the first three chapters, it speaks of the fact that God has called us. Every child of God has a calling on their life that God has called us from and God has called us to. He's called us from the world and God has called us to a place of service. Are you hearing me? And, and, and Paul deals with that in the first three chapters. But after he deals with our calling from the world in the first three chapters, uh, in chapters four, five, in the first half of chapter number six, he deals with a second theme. And the second theme is uh, our conduct in the world. Uh, repeat that with me. Say our conduct <clears throat> in the world. Paul, in those chapters, he deals with our walk. Paul Paul's premise is that our conduct in the world ought to be commiserate with our calling from the world. That it ought to be a level of consistency between our calling and our conduct. That Paul's premise is that as a child of God, uh, that people ought to know who we are uh, based on how we are. Y'all ain't talking to me that... Paul says that people ought to know who we are or whose we are by looking at how we are. That I don't have to tell anybody I'm a child of God or you shouldn't have to tell anybody that you are a Christian. All you have to do is live the life. The Bible says let your light shine so much so that men may see your good works and then in turn glorify your father which is in heaven, you don't have to wear a big cross. You don't have to carry a big old giant print Bible. You don't have to have a dually on your head, walk around with a long white maxi gown. Baby, just live the life. Be because if you're, if you're living the life, somebody's going to know that your conduct reflects um, your calling. And in chapter number four, verse one, Paul, he talks about their walk. He talks about their conduct. In fact, verse one of chapter four says something like this. Paul says, I therefore, a prisoner uh, of the Lord, I beseech you that you would walk worthy of your vocation wherein you've been called. And in verses two and three, uh, he begins talking about the kind of walk we ought to have. He talks about it being, there it is, with lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in, in love. He talks about our conduct. Can the church say our conduct? <clears throat> However, and it seems as if Paul has said so much, watch me, that he's taken the whole first three chapters um, and he's talked, Carl, about uh, our calling from the world. He's taken um, basically chapters four, five, and half of chapter six, and he's talking about or talked about our conduct in the world. But then he does something very unique, Tina, in verse 10 of chapter six. He uses the word finally. He, he, he says, finally, comma, uh, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Listen, he, he stops talking about our calling from the world and our conduct in the world. And then he starts talking about our conflict with the world. He, he, Ambrose, watch this. He stops talking about how we were called from the world and how our conduct in the world should be. And he starts in verses 10 through 24 talking about spiritual warfare. It, it is as if verses 10 through 24 has absolutely nothing to do with everything else in the chapter. Paul says, finally, can someone just yell, finally? 
Finally, Paul says, I, I don't want um, to close this narrative. I don't want to uh, end uh, this letter without talking about conflict because you've got to understand that your calling and your conduct will not cut off or circumvent you having a conflict. Meaning no matter how you live, no matter how much God has called you and invested uh, in you, that in this world you're going to have a conflict. Can the church say conflict? You, you see, Paul could not run the risk of not talking about conflict because if he had not talked about conflict, somebody would think that as soon as you are called and if you have the right conduct, then your life will be filled with sunshine. However, Paul says not true. He talks about fighting to send a message to the faithful that your fighting is not based on faithlessness, but even if you are faithful or unfaithful in this world, you're going to have to end up in a combative place. In other words, Paul says, get ready to rumble because you are going to have conflict. Tell your neighbor, conflict. And I want to spend a little time over the next few weeks talking about, Larry, um, this conflict. Uh, because as I read, as I read uh, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 um, through 24, God gave me a wonderful JT outline on all those verses. Um, God says, in order, watch this, to be uh, um, successful in spiritual warfare, uh, there are three things that you need. He says that we need to have uh, wisdom about the fight that we need to have the right wardrobe um, uh, for the fight, and then we have to have the right weapons in the fight. In fact, repeat after me. Say, wisdom about the fight. <clears throat> then God says we need the right wardrobe for the fight. And then we need the right weapons in the fight. However, I, I, I want to take uh, today's message in the balance of my time talking uh, about the first thing that Paul says we need, and that is, watch this, wisdom about the fight. Because before Paul talks about our enemy, before he talks about uh, the armor of God, before Paul talks about prayer, uh, before Paul talks about the helmet of salvation and the breastplate of righteousness, I'll deal with that next week, uh, Paul says that, that we need to know who our our enemy uh, really is. Pa Paul says that before we can be successful uh, in defeating the devil, uh, we have to define who the devil really is. That, that we have to know who our opponents are. We, we have to know everything that we can about the opposition. We need wisdom. Can the church say wisdom? My cousin Alfredo, he helped me out um, with this particular point. Uh, last year I had the opportunity um, to visit him in Jacksonville. He was the then coach uh, of, of one of the coaches of the Jacksonville Jaguars. And I had an opportunity um, not long ago then, D Danny, to go through All Tail Stadium. And as I walked through the stadium, I saw the locker room where the Jaguars um, kept their gear. I saw the field. I saw the weight room. But one of the things that impressed me the most uh, when I was on that tour of All Tail Stadium uh, was I saw uh, the video production room. And in this awesome, elaborate video production room, I saw a countless amount of, of monitors and computers. I saw um, stacks and stacks of tapes and game film. I, I, I saw notes on the board. I saw statistics and stats. I saw data and player information, a huge files of nothing but player information. And I questioned Alfredo as to why um, the Jaguars had so much information and film on themselves that why invest this much money on watching film of themselves why have this many monitors to watch themselves and he corrected me by saying uh, that all of this equipment was not um, designed to watch them but most of this equipment was designed to watch the opponent that all of these tapes was not on the Jaguars uh, but it was on the opponents that the Jaguars were playing uh, in other words they invested thousands and thousands and thousands thousands of dollars uh, trying to get the best equipment to learn as much as they can about the opposition because it is their premise that before we can have uh, amen, uh, 
a victory over the enemy, uh, we have to know uh, who the enemy uh, really is. And when you look at verses 10 through 13, uh, Paul says uh, four things uh, that every child of God uh, need to know. Watch this. He talks about our faith. He talks about the fight. He talks about our foe, and he concludes with our failure. Please write that down. He says four things. He talks about four different things. He talks about our, our faith. He talks about our fight. He talks about our focus, I mean our, uh, our, our foe, and he concludes with our failure. Look at the first thing that Paul talks about. Paul in verse 10 says, finally, my brethren, watch this, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. The first thing that Paul says to us is that our faith must be uh, invariable. Watch this. Our faith, write it down. Our faith must be uh, invariable. Tell someone close, a neighbor, your faith must be invariable. Anything that's variable, watch this, changes. Anything that's variable uh, fluctuates. Anything that's variable, uh, watch this, it's not set, it's not fixed. Anything uh, that's variable, uh, it moves. Uh, it's kind of like a, a, a variable uh, mortgage rate. Are y'all hearing me? It can be one thing this year and the next thing the next year. But Paul is suggesting, watch this, that if we're going to be uh, successful in spiritual uh, warfare, our faith must be uh, in variable because look at what Paul says Paul says be strong in the Lord and the power of his might note what Paul does not do Shonda, Shonda he does not give us any other option in fact the only option in verse number 10 is the Lord and the power of his might in other words Paul is saying that the source of our strength must be tied in to the Lord that we don't have the luxury of putting faith in any anything or anybody else. You can't put your faith in people. You can't put your faith in stuff. You can't put your faith in things that he must be uh, the source. Tell your neighbor the source of your faith. Oh, in the church, we got this thing, Danny. Well, we, we, we confuse a source with a resource. That the church is not the source, but the church is a, a resource. The pastor is not a source, a, re a source. The pastor is a, a resource. Your job is not the source. Your job is a, a resource. Your family is not the source. Your family members are a resource. And if you can't differentiate between the source and the resource, uh, when you go to a resource thinking that it's the source, uh, when they don't come through with for you, uh, your faith will be depleted. Uh, help me somebody. But if you go to a resource and the resource can't help you, what you got to do is turn your attention to the source because somebody in the building know that if he is the source of your strength, every time you need power, he'll come through. If he is the source of your joy, every time you need encouragement, he'll come through. If he is the source of your finances, when the job lays you off, you can still give God praise because you recognize it's not not job Jireh, but Jehovah Jireh. God has to be the source. Are y'all hearing me? And 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 so and, and I got to hurry. And so what Paul does is what Paul does is uh, he says that if we're going to be um, successful in our spiritual pilgrimage, uh, the first thing that we need to know is that we need to know that our faith must be uh, invariable. It can't be up today and down tomorrow. I can't I believe today and not believe tomorrow. I can't have victory on Monday and vacillate on Wednesday. I, I can't be encouraged on Tuesday and become discouraged on Thursday. I have to, get, I'm not talking to anybody. I have to get to the point in my faith that I believe that come hell or high water, God is going to come through. I have to get to the point in my faith that even though I can't see him, I, I believe that all things are working together for my good. I feel like preaching. I, I have to get to the point in my life that he will never close a door without opening another door. That if he lets me cry, he's 
he's only doing it to prove to me uh, he can be a tear wiper in the midnight hour. I have to get to the point in my faith that I can't doubt God. I've got to trust God uh, even when I can't trace God. Uh, and because you don't know who you're talking but sitting beside, uh, turn to your neighbor and says, neighbor, you got to trust him. You Gosh, can I preach like I feel it today? And you see, and another thing that's interesting, uh, Loretha, in this verse, is verse 12. Watch this. It says, be strong in the Lord. Can I go a little deeper? You see, when you research that phrase in the Greek, it is Karen in the passive voice. And the passive voice says this, that the subject is the recipient of uh, the action. And when you look at this text in the Greek, Iram, it really reads like this. Be made strong in the Lord. Uh, and that's so significant because uh, this text is telling to teach us that I can't make myself strong. Uh, I got to allow him uh, not only to be the source of my strength, but also the sustainer of my strength. How many people have tried to do it on your own? Uh, and every time you've tried, you've fallen. Uh, but if God is the source and the sustainer of your strength, uh, you can take more hell than you thought you can take. Uh, am I talking to anybody in this house uh, who has now come to the conclusion uh, that you can take more stuff than you thought you can take. Uh, you thought that you would have lost your mind by now, uh, but you got to step back and look in the mirror because you have surprised your own self. Uh, you've taken the best shot that the devil gave you and you're still a worshiper. Uh, you've gone through hell and high water and you still come to church and give God praise. Uh, you've been lied on and talked about. Uh, the devil has tried everything he could uh, to destroy destroy you mentally but the devil is a liar you prove to the devil I'm able to keep going ah uh, can I talk to somebody Gosh, I got to hurry. I got to hurry. Uh, so, so, so the first thing that we discover, that if I'm going to cope in the combative place, the first thing I need to know, I need to know, watch this, that my faith must be invariable. Can the church say must be invariable? But the second thing that Paul says in the text, in verse 12, he says, not only must our faith be invariable, Paul says that our fight is inevitable. Can the church say our fight is inevitable? Look at the first three words of verse number 12. Because when you look at verse 12, Paul says, for we wrestle. Stop right there. He says, for we wrestle. Wrestle. Let me try it again. He says, for we wrestle. When you look at the grammatical structure of the text, Paul is not suggesting that wrestling will be an option. He is not suggesting that wrestling may come or may not come. Paul is saying that wrestling or fighting is compulsory, that we are going to wrestle. Paul suggests to us, oh God, I feel like preaching, that fighting is inevitable. Tell your neighbor, it's inevitable. Meaning it's just a matter of time before you have to fight. Listen, uh, let me see the hands of people that didn't have major trouble this month. Meaning uh, if you didn't have a major crisis in your life this month, raise your hand. Meaning, uh, come on, uh, if you did not have a major crisis uh, in your life this month, let me see your hands. Meaning uh, things went relatively well. Uh, I, I mean, you had a relatively good month. Come on, let me see your hands. Come on. Now listen, those of you that got your hands up, what you need to do is... Uh, Throw the other hand up and tell the Lord thank you uh, because it's just a matter of time. Meaning uh, if you didn't have to fight in April, uh, don't you get too happy, brother. Don't you get too happy, sister, because you may have to uh, ha, ha, fight in the month of May. You, you may have to catch hell in the month of June uh, because you need to know that your fight is just a matter of, I don't care how faithful you are, faithful folk got to fight. I don't care how favored you are, favorite folk got to fight. I don't care how much you follow Christ. Followers got to fight. I don't care how much you come to church. Worshippers have to fight. It's just a matter of time. Can I go a little deeper? Paul says, verse 12, for we wrestle. The Greek word JC he used is parlay. Can the church say parlay? The, the, the word Parlay, gosh, please don't miss this. 
it, it, it means hand-to-hand combat. It, it, it connotes the thought, oh God, it connotes the thought of having physical confrontation with a person that's trying to pin you down. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me. It's kind of like the WWF back in the day, not now. It, it, it connotes the thought of, of, of a wrestler trying to pin you down, watch this, and hold you down for an unspecified amount of time. Pa- Paul says, please don't miss this, Bruce, that Paul says that, that it's just a matter of time before you run across an opponent that's trying to hold you down. Paul Paul says that that spiritual forces are going to come up against your life that will try to suppress you, that will try to keep you, watch this, from reaching your maximum potential uh, that God has ordained for you to go to a certain level. But there are spiritual forces uh, trying to suppress you, trying to keep you down. Uh, Is there anybody in the building uh, who can relate to the fact that they're forces uh, that's trying to stop you uh, from being the woman that God uh, has called you to be. uh, Trying to stop you uh, from reaching the financial level of success that God has already ordained on your life. Uh, He's ordained for you to be the head and not the tail. uh, The lender and not the borrower. He's ordained for you to live above and not below. But every time you try to rise up, uh, there's opposition uh, trying, I guess I'll preach to myself, trying to hold you down what the devil is a liar because you got to understand uh, that when God has ordained the purpose uh, and destiny over your life uh, can't no devil in hell uh, hold you or stop you uh, from reaching the level that God uh, has already ordained in your life uh, I double dare you to stop fire with your neighbor and tell your neighbor neighbor I'm rising up uh, people have tried to hold me down uh, things have tried to hold me down uh, the devil has tried to hold me down uh, But the devil is a liar. I'm raising up. But watch this. I got got another one for you. I don't don't know if you're ready for this one. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, get ready for this one. Because this one, it it gets kind of hard. Because I, I can handle when Paul said that my faith must be invariable. I can handle it when Paul says that my fight, oh God, is going to be inevitable. But Nate, what threw me off was when Paul said in the text, verse 12, that my foe is invisible. I guess I'll preach this to myself. Paul says that my foe is invisible. He says, I wish somebody was getting this today. Paul says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but we are wrestling against principalities, against powers, uh, against rulers of darkness of this world, uh, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Y'all ain't here for me. You see, it's one thing to be in a fight. Uh, it's another thing to have faith. Uh, but how can I have victory uh, over a foe I can't even see? Uh, how can I rise up above forces uh, that I can't even see? Paul says uh, the fight is inevitable, uh, but my foe is uh, invisible. Okay, I, I, need, I need to show you what I'm talking about. Come here, Kenny. Play, please stand. Put your Bible down. Come up here. Richard, stand up here. Iram, you stand. Watch this. Kenny, face Richard. Keep your eyes on him. Richard, keep your eyes on Kenny. Iram, face both of them with your arms folded. Iram, put a smile on your face. Kenny, don't smile. Richard, don't smile. Kenny, get in the boxing fighting position. Richard, get in the boxing fighting position. Here is what the devil has us doing. The devil has Kenny trying to kill Richard. Has Richard trying to kill Kenny. And the devil is laughing. The devil is having a pun. The devil is having a party. Because Kenny thinks that Richard is his enemy. And Richard thinks that Kenny is his enemy. So the mistake that they're making, number one, is they're fighting the wrong person. Can the church say the wrong person? 
And not only are they fighting the wrong person, but the Bible says that our enemy is in high places. Uh, they're fighting on the wrong plane. Uh, they're fighting on the wrong level. Are y'all hearing me? Because they can never defeat the devil uh, on that level when the devil is on this level. Uh, the devil is smiling. The devil's having fun uh, because the devil got Kenny thinking uh, that Richard is his enemy. Uh, and the devil got the enemy thinking uh, that Kenny is Richard's enemy, but the devil is a liar. What Kenny and Richard need to do uh, is recognize uh, that they are not each other's enemy, uh, but there is another enemy uh, that's on a different level. Watch this. Now, in order to defeat the devil on this level, they got to use a weapon uh, that's powerful enough to bring the devil off their level. Uh, to oh, y'all ain't hearing me. Uh, get on your knees. Get on your knees. Uh, start praying. Stop praying. Even though the devil's on this level, how many know that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal? But if they keep on praying, if they keep on fasting, they can knock the devil down to another level. And do I have any help in this house? I don't know who I'm talking to, but you got to realize that the demon on your job is not your enemy. The person trying to hate on you is not your enemy. That man is not your enemy. Your fight is against the devil. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, you got to fight against the right person. We, we, we can't get victory because we spend so much time fighting. Y'all ain't going to help me preach. We, 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 can't, we, we can't succeed because we spend so much time Fighting one another. The devil, is, the devil got me jealous of you. The devil got you envious of me. The devil got me trying to hate on you and have you trying to hate on me. But if we all can get together and recognize that what I am, I am by the grace of God. If you can ever recognize that what you got, God gave it to you. What you know, God told you. And where you're going, God took you. Help me, somebody. You ain't got to be jealous of nobody because I'm not your enemy. The devil is the enemy. Watch this. So we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Tell your neighbor, I ain't your enemy. I don't care what people do to you. You got to fight the devil in them. Y'all don't, don't like me today. You, you don't. You, you, you don't like me today. You want to be mad. You, you want to be angry. But you sometimes you got to love the hell out of folk. <laughs> Y'all ain't hearing me. You, you got to love the devil. Lo love the hell. Let me hurry. So, so, so Paul, Paul suggests, watch this, that if we're going to be successful in spiritual warfare. He, he says, first of all, our faith, y'all got to get this. Our faith must be what? Oh, y'all flunking today. Unbelievable. This on tape, y'all flunking. Our faith, okay, there's your cheat sheet. It must be invariable. Anything that's variable moves. Paul says, be strong in the Lord. And the power of his might. Th then Paul says our fight will be inevitable because the text says for we wrestle. We, we are going to wrestle. And what's tricky is, Larry, though our fight is inevitable, our foe indeed is invisible. And, and, and it's kind of depressing because... It's frustrating when you're a shallow boxer. I mean, you, you, you want to fight somebody you can see. Y'all ain't hearing me. Y'all don't want to be real. The, 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 the one that lied on you, you can see him. And, and, and you want to retaliate based on what you see. But 
text says that the real enemy is not flesh and blood, but principalities. H however, he, he, he closes by saying one more thing. He, he, he talks about our failure. Can the church say our failure? Be be because though our foe is invisible and our fight is inevitable, what shouted me was when Paul suggested that our failure is impossible. Tell your neighbor, it's impossible to fail. Be be because verse 13, he says, watch this. Therefore, take up the whole arm of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Verse 14, first word, it says, stand. Watch this. Paul in verse 13, he talks about the evil day. Somebody just shout the evil day. Paul, Paul lets us know in verse 13, God, let me say it right. In verse 13, that, that an evil day is going to come. H however, the shouting news in verse 13 uh, is when Paul says uh, that, that you will or may be able uh, to withstand, which, oh God, which tells me that no matter what the devil does in the evil day when the dust settles, uh, no matter what the devil tries to do, that when push comes, to shove no matter what scheme no matter what trickery no matter uh, what scheme or plot the devil tries you somebody starting to get it uh, the text says I'll be able uh, to uh, withstand I'm gonna try it one more time uh, note what Paul does uh, Paul talks about uh, our success before he talks about our strategy uh, Paul lets us know in verse 13 uh, he says that in the evil day when the day is done Paul lets us know that when push comes the shelf I'm still going to be standing now I don't know how that makes you feel but for those of us who's going through some stuff and those of us who are going through some stuff it makes me feel good knowing that when the dust is settled in the end I'm going to be standing and because you don't know who you're talking but sitting beside help me preach to your neighbor just tell your neighbor neighbor in the end you're going to come out standing uh, yeah, look at what Paul says. Uh, Paul says in verse 13, and I'm finished. Uh, Paul says when you have uh, the whole armor of God on, uh, Paul says uh, that you will be able uh, to withstand in the evil day. Uh, and when you've done all that you can do, uh, when you've prayed all that you can pray, uh, when you've fasted all that you can fast, uh, when you've cried all that the devil tried to make you cry, when you've gone through the motions, uh, the end result is... Uh, you'll still be standing uh, as I go to my seat this morning. Uh, I wanted to leave somebody uh, with a word of consolation uh, because the, the devil uh, has tried everything uh, in his satanic power uh, to get you off your feet. Uh, the devil has tried everything uh, to knock you down. Uh, but the sounding news is uh, the text declares uh, that when the dust settles, uh, I'll still be standing standing. Uh, it's kind of like that inflatable doll uh, that always weebled uh, and always rocked, uh, but it never stayed down. Uh, and that's who you are. You are a child of God, uh, the kind of worshiper. Uh, you are a woman of God, uh, the kind of praiser. Uh, you are a child of God, uh, the kind of believer uh, that God has invested uh, something so special uh, that you can't stay down. Uh, you've got something uh, inside of you. Uh, I call it spiritual elasticity. Uh, you have something uh, down in you uh, that's so special uh, that divorce uh, can't knock you down uh, and keep you down. Uh, bankruptcy uh, can't knock you down uh, and keep you down. Uh, unemployment uh, can't knock you down uh, and keep you down. Uh, a heartache uh, can't knock you down uh, and keep you down. Uh, friends uh, walking out and leaving you uh, can't knock you down uh, and keep you down. Uh, child molested uh, can't knock you down uh, and keep you down. Uh, abandonment uh, can't knock you down uh, and keep you down. Uh, Negroes lying on you uh, can't knock you down uh, and keep you down. Uh, in fact, tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, uh, I've been down before, uh, but I'm standing. 
I've been down before, but I'm standing and what I need, I've just got 50 folk in the building who can help me celebrate. You're on your feet. I need somebody who can help me celebrate standing on your feet. And I don't know, maybe there's somebody in the building this morning who's lying down, who's off your feet, and you're saying, Pastor Jackson, you don't know what I'm going through. I'm down. I'm off my feet. Well, child of God, be encouraged because the Lord told me to tell you that you're on your way to rebounding. Somebody shout the rebound. Somebody shout the rebound. You see, I've discovered that the most valuable player on the basketball team is not the one who can shoot the ball. It's not the one who dribbles the ball. But the most valuable person is the one who can rebound a missed shot because rebounding gives the team another chance to score. I don't know who I'm talking to. Is there anybody in the building who needs another chance to score? Tell your neighbor, neighbor, I'm rebounding. Neighbor, I'm getting up on my feet. I took the best shot. Oh, y'all ain't helping me. But I took the best shot that the devil had to give me. He tried to make me lose my mind but I'm still standing I'm still standing turn to somebody and say neighbor are you standing I'm standing I'm standing let me close on Christ the solid rock I stand all of the ground sinking sand I dare not trust the sweetest frame but hold Holy, 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 lean in, hey God, stand, oh come on, encourage your neighbor, tell your neighbor, neighbor, stand, hey glory, thank you Jesus, thank you Jesus, I wish y'all felt like I felt. I wish I felt like I felt. I wish there was somebody. The devil has tried to knock you off your feet. But can I give you a word? If the devil could kill you, he would have killed you by now. If the devil could defeat you, you would have been defeated by now. If the devil could take you out, he would have took you out by now. But the mere fact you're still here lets me know no weapon formed against you can prosper. Can you say yes? Say yes. Hey, look. Give him glory. I'm still standing. I'm still standing. Hey, I'm still standing. I need somebody in the house who's been through a lot. I know it ain't everybody, but I need somebody who's been through hell and high water. I need somebody who was this close to going over the edge. I need somebody who is this close to losing your mind to help me give him glory because God blocked it. The devil tried, but God. The devil tried, but God. Almost had you, but God. Shoulda, coulda, woulda, but God. You were this close, but God. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, but God. Yes, 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 I got to quit, but yes, yes, 
Yes! 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 Can I celebrate? I'm not celebrating my house. I'm not celebrating my car. I'm not celebrating my clothes. I'm celebrating the fact I'm standing. 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 I know it don't sound like much. I know it's a small thing. I know it's insignificant. But if you've been down just to be on your feet, if you've been crazy just to be standing, I know it don't sound like much. I know it ain't nothing to some of y'all. But I'm talking to somebody who's just glad to be on your feet. Just glad to be freed of oppression. Freed of stress. Freed of drama. I'm standing. Listen, gosh, I got to go. It's 1030. Listen, next week, listen to this. Next week, I'm going to talk about the wardrobe. Because Paul says you got to get dressed for battle. He talks about Krista, a helmet and a breastplate and shield, sword. But before you get the wardrobe for the battle you have to have wisdom about the battle y'all ain't hearing me and, and so in your wisdom about this battle you gotta know first thing cause I don't want you just to leave here you gotta get this put the points back on the swing you gotta have faith that's invariable a faith that won't move a faith that ain't going nowhere. It's a faith that's in the Lord and the power of his might. Then you got to know that your fight is inevitable because it's coming. So don't start tripping when hell break out in your house. Don't start wondering why me. Your fight is inevitable. But keep in mind that your foe is invisible. You ain't fighting against your supervisor. Your supervisor ain't got the power to hold you down. A fight ain't, oh man, fight ain't against your neighbor. Your neighbor ain't got the power to stop you. Stop, fight the real fight. Fight against the real enemy. It ain't, it ain't the people that you see. Your husband ain't your enemy. Your wife ain't your enemy. Your children ain't your enemy. It's the devil that's making your son act the fool. It's the devil that's making your daughter rebellious. 
It's the devil that make your husband act crazy. It's the devil that make your wife not submit. It's the devil that make them do it. Fight the real fight. But then know that failure, man, that's impossible. That ain't going to fail. I wish you would get that. They ain't failing. Because when the dust settles, I'll still be standing.